Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Total War Rome 2 Mods Weekly. Today we're looking at an overhaul mod for the Wrath of Sparta campaign called Demetrios Poliarchites. I'm going to come out of the gate and say right away, Demetrios Poliarchites is one of the best overhaul mods for a Rome 2 DLC campaign that I've played since launch. It turns the undercooked, uninspired, and underwhelming Wrath of Sparta campaign into something truly great, more on the level of Rise of the Republic or Empire Divided in terms of quality. In fact, it actually appropriates and repurposes features from those DLCs and incorporates them into the mod, such as banditry, plagues, and unique government actions. As for the setting, it turns the clock forward from the base game's Peloponnesian War and thrusts you into the tumultuous wars between Alexander the Great's successors, the famous Diadochi. There are new campaign mechanics, new factions, and of course, new units. And all of it feels polished like an official DLC. Created by Gyros Meister, it recently received a major update which added Pergamon as a playable faction complete with its own unique mechanics and events. I knew then that it was time to dive back in and feature it on the channel once again. I covered it last year and praised it then for its mod-friendly, vanilla-feeling nature. And those views were only reinforced in my latest playthrough of the most recent version of the mod. So in this video, I'm going to go over what the mod does and why you should seriously consider giving it a try on your next Rome Tube playthrough. There's a ton to go over here, so if that sounds good to you, then a like in the video would really help me out. And let's begin. The campaign begins in 294 BCE, just as Demetrios ascends to the throne of Macedon. But he is far from the only Malacca in this Greek Game of Thrones. Lysimachus, Ptolemy, and Pyrrhus are the other main playable contenders. By the way, yes, that's THE Pyrrhus, the one who famously would go on to smash his face against Rome's infinitely respawning legions 15 years later. Athens, Sparta, Bithynia, Pergamon, and the Aetolian League represent the underdog powers who predictably have more challenging starts. Pergamon is the newest addition to the playable faction lineup, and it comes with its own unique mechanics and quirks. For starters, you begin as a client state, and uniquely, you cannot declare independence on your own. You have to wait for war declarations to gain your freedom. Additionally, you have 10 unique events specific to Pergamon. I don't want to spoil them here, but some of them are really interesting and immersive. Pergamese Noble Cavalry and Cappadocian Cavalry return from the Grand Campaign to serve as unique units for Pergamon, alongside the brand new Mysian Infantry. The faction leaders for Pergamon, as well as for several other factions, have unique traits which reflect their roles in history. This is an awesome and immersive touch that makes the leaders stand out in their own unique way. These things alone are huge improvements over what we have in Vanilla, with its generic character traits for most of the characters in the campaign aside from Pericles and Socrates. Here we get much more gameplay variety and unit diversity as well. From the aforementioned Pergamon specific events and diplomatic woes, to Epirus under Pyrrhus struggling to raise armies because of his faction's manpower problems, to Ptolemy bringing native Egyptian units into the fight for Greece. There's just a lot more going on here than there is in Vanilla. The campaign feels fresh and dynamic. Pirates will randomly spawn into the game, wreaking havoc from the high seas on unprotected and unsuspecting victims. The risk of pirate invasion is ever-present, and you never know exactly where the next stack will spawn, so keeping reserve armies to deal with this threat is highly recommended. There are now dedicated stable buildings for all factions aside from Sparta so cavalry will require more of an investment in both money and building slots than we're used to from Vanilla Rome 2. Ptolemy's Egypt, meanwhile, has two separate barrack chains, with one focused on Egyptian units and another focused on Greek ones. Things like this make the factions stand out and play differently from one another. As mentioned earlier, each faction has a unique government action that it can activate, which is a mechanic pulled right from Rise of the Republic and retooled to fit the setting of the mod. For example, Bithynia can promote Hellenism in its territories, which increases wealth from culture, increases research, and public order at the expense of Hellenic influence in its regions. These mechanics come with significant downsides, so you'll want to use them judiciously. Banditry and plagues are present in the campaign, and frankly, I'm thrilled to have them here. Their inclusion increases the challenge of the campaign, and the plague system is ripped straight from the mechanically superior Total War Attila. 
Cults and their attendant fringe religions are included as well, though I have yet to find a good reason to build one of them since their introduction in Empire Divided. Still, the inclusion of different religions is an immersive touch that I think adds to the atmosphere of the mod. As you might expect, the unit rosters are much more varied in this mod compared to vanilla. Gone are the copy-paste rosters of Wrath of Sparta. Dimitrios Poliarchites features unique rosters for every playable faction. It's not just Ptolemy and his imported Egyptians and African elephants either. Athens fields more traditional hoplite type units, while Demetrios Poliarchites himself fields Sarissa Phalanx type units. The Aetolian League's hoplites carry long-range javelins that absolutely shred armored foes from the flanks. They behave sort of like the Iberian units behave in vanilla. The fantasy of playing as Sparta is enhanced by design decisions made by Gyros Meister. The Agogi units, aka the Spartan namesake units, are hugely expensive to maintain, thus discouraging doom stacking while simultaneously simulating the population struggles that the Spartans had historically. When you commit Spartan units to battle in this mod, you know that things are serious. The units look fantastic and they play as you would expect them to, largely because the battles are balanced for vanilla. And for the record, that's a huge bonus in my eyes. It means that you're not forced into the mod author's vision for battle pacing and you are free to add your own preferred battle mods instead. The mod is very modular overall and is generally compatible with other mods. I hope Gyros Meister maintains this design philosophy throughout the mod's development because it's very refreshing and it contributes to the mod's polished DLC-like feeling. One thing to note though is that it is not multiplayer campaign friendly. That's not a big deal for me since I don't care much for multiplayer, but I think it's important for you to know. Overall, Demetrios Poliarchites is a brilliant overhaul which improves on nearly every aspect of Wrath of Sparta. The campaign is deeper, more mechanically challenging, and more dynamic. The battles are far more interesting and varied with pikemen, swordsmen, and elephants being a massive improvement over Vanilla's endless hoplite grindfests. There are nine factions to choose from over Vanilla's four, and each one plays significantly different from each other. If you gave up on unmodded Wrath of Sparta like I did, then you definitely owe it to yourself to give this mod a try. If the official Wrath of Sparta was this level of quality, I would have put it in the A tier easily instead of the C tier where it is now. And that's it for this episode of Total War Rome 2 Mods Weekly. If you want to play the mod, you can find the link to it in the description box down below. Be sure to leave a thumbs up on the workshop page to show your support for the awesome work that these mod authors do for free. If you want to see more Rome 2 Mods weekly episodes, check out the playlist on your screen right now to find more overviews of dozens of Rome 2 mods just like this. A like on the video would really help me out. Take care everyone, and I will see you in the next one.